bicycle wheel in this problem is at rest at the corner of a curb, and we're asked to find the minimum horizontal force F required to lift it up onto the curb. Before we start solving it, it's useful to look at some of the geometry and dimensions. First, this distance shown in green, the distance between the horizontal line running through the center and the top of the curb, I'll call distance D sub H, and it equals capital R, the wheel's radius, minus h, the height of the curb. And it's useful to have an expression for this distance between the wheel's center and the curb, call it d sub c. We can find it from this right triangle that I'll draw in the light blue color. This leg of the right triangle has a length d sub h. This one is the radius of the wheel. With the right angle there, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the other leg. It's the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of d sub h. If we substitute in the expression that we have above for d sub h, we find this. The capital R squares cancel, and we find d sub c equals the square root of 2rh minus h squared. Given these two distances, we can draw a free body diagram for the wheel and solve for the minimum force F required to lift the wheel up onto the curb. The wheel's weight, mg, acts at its center. There's a normal force directly below it where the wheel touches the ground. There's the horizontal force F that acts at the center. And finally, there's a force that the curb exerts on the wheel. I'll draw its components here, rx and ry. Now we can apply the conditions for equilibrium. Sum of the forces, x and y, equaling zero and the sum of the torques about any point equaling zero. The minimum force F required to raise the wheel onto the curb occurs when the wheel just begins to lift up, which means that the normal force disappears. So we can zero out the normal force. This means that we can solve for the force F just by summing torques. I'll sum torques about point A, with torques out of the screen being positive. Rx and Ry create no torque about point A, so we just need to look at the torques due to force F and the weight W of the wheel. Let's look at force F first. Here's its R vector. If we put the right hand fingers in that direction and curl them towards the force, we find the torque is into the screen in the negative direction with a force of F and a moment arm of D sub H, the shortest distance between this line of action and the pivot. That's the length of this vertical blue line. The torque created by the weight has this R vector, putting the right hand fingers in that direction and curling them down in the direction of the weight. We find the right hand thumb points out of the screen, that's the positive direction, with a force of W or MG and a moment arm of D sub C, the shortest distance between this line of action and the pivot. That's the length of this horizontal blue line. And now we can solve for the force F, which is the minimum force, because we've set the normal force to zero. It equals this expression, mg d sub c over d sub h. When you substitute the expressions we have from before for those two distances, you finally find this expression. This minimum force gets smaller as the wheel gets larger, and the minimum force gets larger as the curb's height h increases.